When it comes to Spy's stealth abilities, none are as important, in my opinion, as his Invisiwatch. Disguises are also important and can play an integral role in most games, but without invisibility, it's easy to imagine Spy wouldn't be getting anywhere. Given how powerful and important of an ability it is though, it makes sense that there's a lot more to it than what meets the eye. You need to know where the enemy front line is to cloak in time, to make sure you're invisible before the enemy can see you to prevent them from going into alert mode. On top of that, you need to navigate your way behind them, dodging and weaving between bullets, players, projectiles, and flames of course. But in my opinion, no part of the process is as important as the final step, decloaking. It goes without saying that a lot of this video only applies to the standard Invis-Watch and Cloak and & Dagger. The Dead Ringer can still benefit from some of the information here, but only in terms of raw fundamentals. Speaking of the basics, here are some of the statistics to keep in mind when using the Invis-Watches. By right-clicking while visible, you can start your cloak, which takes a total of one second before you become fully invisible, also emitting a small sound to players around you. With the Invis Watch, your invisibility lasts for 10 seconds by default, and 6.6 .6 seconds with the Cloak and Dagger, assuming you don't stop moving. Finally, right-clicking again while invisible will decloak you, taking about 2 seconds before you're able to use your weapons, but of course you'll be visible to enemies the moment you start decloaking. And in terms of recharge times, 30 seconds for the Invis Watch from empty, and 15 seconds for the Cloak and Dagger. All of these statistics are very important of course, but don't worry about remembering each specific one. The best way to get used to them is just to play using these weapons. You'll get a feel for them over time. The most important stat we're talking about today though is decloak time, hence this video's focus on the decloaking part of the equation. The first important thing to mention with decloaking is the importance of being able to choose when you decloak. Obviously, running out of meter with either watch will make you visible to the enemy team in one way or the other. And it's always best to instead keep your cloak meter up with ammo kits in the meantime. This makes map knowledge an incredibly important skill as spy. Knowing where ammo is can be so integral to your routing, and ultimately, which stabs are possible and which aren't. With this knowledge, you can plan out routes to get to where your enemies are even if it's further than where your watch will allow by default. While the Cloak and Dagger can't pick up ammo kits to recharge your cloak while you're cloaked, you can still benefit from them just by quickly decloaking and recloaking. Just be sure it's safe before you do so. Paying attention to your surroundings as well is obviously important while moving around invisible, but especially so given that any player that dies, including teammates, will drop a medium ammo kit that you can use. If you're in a bit of a hot spot and are running out of cloak, look around. It's pretty common for a player's dropped kits to be lying around, and will save you a lot more often than you'd think. And to put a stop to any more cloak and dagger flavored discrepancies in this video, choosing the exact time you decloak over long periods of time is this weapon's forte. If you watch the rest of this video but still struggle with the decloak timing on the stock watch, try out the CND. What it allows for is permanent invisibility while standing still, which enables you to truly choose the perfect time to decloak when behind or around some enemies. It gives you as much time as you like to observe enemy movement patterns, relay information to your team, see which players like to do what. It's a great tool for learning. It especially comes in handy in situations like payload defense, where large clumps of enemies often gather on a single point and you don't know when exactly they'll be vulnerable. With that out of the way, we can get into the real meat of things. When it comes to decloaking, I like to separate things into two categories, hidden and open decloaks. Hidden decloaks are when you use things like map geometry, enemy buildings, props, or anything similar to hide behind while you decloak, making you hidden to the enemy even if they look in your direction. Meanwhile, an open decloak is just the opposite, decloaking without any direct cover other than the fact that the enemy isn't looking at you at that moment. Both of these have tons of room for discussion, so I'll tackle one at a time, starting with hidden decloaking. But first, a quick disclaimer that decloaking is very complicated. I'm making a big separation of style in this video for the sake of learning, but don't ever get yourself stuck in the mindset of absolutes. Spy is a fluid class, and you can use these fundamentals to start out small and then grow out of them over time using your own intuition to choose what's best eventually. Overall, using hidden decloaks is often the more consistent option when it comes to decloaking safely, and will likely be the type you use 80% of the time. It uses static forms of stealth that don't rely on enemy habits working in your favor, meaning you can successfully decloak 99% of the time. Of course, by this logic, running all the way to upward last as soon as the round starts and hiding behind a crate allows for a successful decloak, so the real science behind this comes from doing it where it matters. And on that note, what makes a good decloak spot? Specific decloak spots are something that primarily only applies to the hidden style of decloaks, since they often refer to specific spots on the map where you can hide behind an object. 
Obviously, I'm not going to list every single spot on every map that's effective, so instead I'll give you a list of traits that allow you to not only find some of the more common decloaking spots, but also get creative and find new ones you wouldn't expect to be effective. The first trait of a good decloak spot is being near a common enemy gathering point, and by near, I mean very near. For example, if the blue team is staging their push in this common area on upward, this rock here can provide some great cover for a successful decloak, but when it comes to accomplishing your goal of stabbing people, it can be dangerous. If you watched my spy tips video a few months back, you might remember a stat that I called the time of exposure. This stat refers to the amount of time the enemy has to turn around and see you before you're able to stab them and are still walking towards them. Back to this rock, even if you're able to decloak just fine, it's a little bit of a walk to get to where the enemies often are. However, also in this area, these wooden posts can actually be more than enough for you to decloak behind. While enemies can technically see you through it, it's a great example of how you don't need perfect cover to decloak, only cover that's good enough. This spot is also much closer to where the enemies might set up shop as well, meaning it takes significantly less time to get to them, minimizing your time of exposure. The difference between these two spots may seem very small, at most a second difference, but when you're playing such an all or nothing class like Spy, making things as consistent as possible is so important for being truly effective in any given game. Players check for spies often, and that second saved, in reality, makes you magnitudes harder to spot, thus demonstrating the importance of choosing a decloak spot that's close to your target. The only situation in which being closer to an enemy is more dangerous is by alerting them with your decloaking sound, but that doesn't have much to do with specific decloak spots, and we'll talk about it more later. As long as you're at least 90% hidden, you've got a good chance of succeeding. That honestly covers most of what makes any given decloak spot good, but there are a few other smaller things to keep note of that'll go over. First, try to find spots where no enemies will spot you decloaking, not just your target. Right here on upward is a great way to hide from enemies pushing the cart through the small gap between the rocks, but you're 100% exposed to the entirety of Blue's spawn area. Of course, if a gibbous scout or something spots you a mile away, you might be fine, but it's also often safer to assume that players will use voice communication to warn their teammates. Even if it's much rarer in pubs, this will get you in the habit of decloaking in extremely safe spots, allowing you to do well against even the best teams. Next is the fact that even seemingly risky spots can be consistent if you're fast enough. The best example I can use is the cart itself. Crouching behind it totally conceals you from enemies on the other side of it, and obviously the cart is going to be a hotspot for enemies, making it a weirdly effective decloak spot given my logic so far. Obviously the last rule here applies tenfold, make sure you won't immediately be spotted by other enemies when decloaking here, since again, a lot of enemies will be around. My final tip for good decloak spots is a surprisingly important one, verticality. Maps in TF2 aren't known for utilizing verticality a lot, but when you're able to, it's easily one of the best, if not the best form of cover you can utilize for decloaking and getting stabs. The reason this is the case is weird, but makes sense if you think about it. Normally, moving towards a player requires you to walk towards them, of course. This takes time, however, and Spy, while quick, can often be spotted. However, what verticality does is make the speed you approach your enemies with your falling speed, rather than your standard walking speed, the former of which is much faster. This spot on Frontier is a great example of using verticality effectively. Even if it seems very exposed to blue spawn, players pushing the cart here are very unlikely to look anywhere near you, almost guaranteeing stabs given they don't turn around at the perfect time, which happens sometimes. Players already have issues looking up and spotting things like sentries, or even heavies firing down at them, so when you're adding the stealth abilities of the spy on top of that, you have one of the most consistent methods of getting stabs in the game. Now then, with the traits of a good hiding spot out of the way, we can talk about when you should use hidden decloaking. While it can technically work in almost any situation, it's most important to talk about enemies who are less distracted than others. For the context of this video, the opposite of distracted means 100% focusing on spy checking, and being fully distracted means they aren't focusing on spies at all. So when I say less distracted, I'm specifically referring to players who are mostly not focused on spy checking. This means they're doing things like walking towards the point, upgrading their buildings, healing teammates, etc. When players perform these actions, they can still spy check relatively often, which is why hidden decloaking in these scenarios is really your only option. For consistency's sake, you should always assume people are going to be turning around periodically, so finding the closest decloak spot you can to them is very important to minimize your risk of getting caught, i.e. your time of exposure, like I mentioned before. However, skilled players will also hear your decloak sound, so even if they can't see you, they might know you're still around and become very spy aware. So of course, if you can help it, having other sounds around while you decloak always makes a situation safer to do so. 
It's something you definitely can't always control, but it's an important part of decloaking in Spy's metagame as a whole. If you do want to risk things though with a loud but hidden decloak, make sure you're going for an important pick like an engineer, medic, or heavy. You don't want to risk things on the random scout. Now, this all might seem pretty confusing to put together in your head, so here's a full summary of what we've covered so far. Hidden decloaking is when you use any form of cover to hide behind while you decloak. It works best when enemies are at least moderately distracted, it isn't completely silent, and when going for important targets such as engineers, medics, or other important picks. On top of that, the best places to hit and decloak are behind cover, but close to enemy gathering points are still hidden from players other than your target and especially vertical hiding spots. Now at this point, it's important that I reiterate that this isn't an exact science. What I aim to provide in this video isn't a 100% guide to decloaking, but rather a strong base that new to intermediate spies can use to start learning how to become more consistent and then build on with their own experience. Just playing spy will teach you better than I ever could, but I believe these fundamentals can give you a good place to start if you're having a lot of trouble. This also entirely applies to the other form of decloaking that I almost forgot about, open decloaking. Open decloaking, as the name implies, is when decloaking out in the open. Unlike hidden decloaking, the open style only works consistently in one specific situation, when enemies are entirely distracted by a dangerous opponent. This sentence has a lot of meaning to it, so let's go over it. Completely distracted means that they have a very specific goal in mind for whatever they're doing, almost always attacking. The only other examples of this are when medics are healing players who are dangerously low on health and are actively being attacked, or when engineers are healing their own buildings that are also low on health and actively being attacked. These situations require a lot of focus from enemy players and give you a very good chance to stab them. Of course, there isn't a 0% chance they'll turn around at the worst possible time, but it's more unlikely now than ever. As for the second part of that sentence, being distracted by a dangerous opponent. What I mean by a dangerous enemy is one that has a very real chance of killing the player you're trying to stab. A power class right in front of them dealing lots of damage, a leveled sentry gun that's shooting them, etc. I specify this because sometimes an enemy might be fighting somebody, but rather than being a true threat, it's a spy off in the distance poking them with a revolver or something. I.e. a threat that they can afford to stop paying attention to and instead check behind them for spies. So then, to summarize, when enemies are completely distracted by an important task, and or are fighting an enemy that they need to kill to survive, those are the only moments when open decloaking is consistently viable. Even if it's the most risky way to decloak and stab someone, it's the fastest. And as we've discussed, speed is very important when it comes to spy. Especially so if, like I mentioned, the enemy is shooting an enemy sentry or are completely enveloped with capturing an objective. Killing them as fast as possible can save a teammate's sentry or the entire game even. Remember though, there are no absolutes as spy, and open decloaking can easily result in another enemy spotting you and calling you out to your target. A medic telling us heavy to turn around for example. And to extend that further and tell you one last time, all the advice I've given today is never 100% guaranteed to work, especially in pubs. Sometimes you can just open decloak right behind somebody when they're just walking from spawn and it'll work fine. Sometimes you're as careful as possible with a perfect hidden decloak and you get spotted elsewhere. Spy is difficult, easy to kill, and sometimes just unfun if enemies are spy checky enough. But what's important is that there are many little things you can do to give yourself advantages. And decloaking is easily one of the most important things to improve at. Backstabbing people is already a bit of a toughie, but if your decloaking game is on point, I assure you that you'll slowly but consistently get more and more stabs every game. Remember, every opponent is distracted at some point, and it's all about just finding the right time, the perfect moment to walk up behind them and this fucking game sucks!